Welcome back everyone and thanks for joining me for this episode of my Manchester United career on FM17. In the last episode, we did have that Liverpool and Tottenham blockbuster in the Premier League. We finished up with that game against Tottenham where unfortunately we did lose 2-0 after coming back from the two-week international break. And after beating Liverpool so convincingly at Anfield, I did think that we were going to be a lot better against the league leaders. But with them picking up the three points at Old Trafford, it's put them in such a good position heading into the busiest time of the season, December. I have also played a couple of games off camera. The first game being the Thursday following that loss to Tottenham at Old Trafford in the Europa League group stages. It was the fifth game and we were away to St Etienne. We beat them 4-1. Valencia got the first goal. Then they drew level in the 16th. Then we had to wait just past the hour mark for Jesse Lingard to get our nose in front once more. And then Phil Jones made it 3-1. And then Mata finished things up for United. But unfortunately, Daley Blind had to come off injured in the 90th minute. Then on that Sunday... We lost again in the Premier League. That's two losses now in the league. This time it was away to Stoke. Main Biram Juve was on form. He bagged a hat-trick against United. Very disappointing results. And it didn't help matters because Tottenham also won. Then we bounced back in the EFL quarter-final. We are through to the semis now with a 3-0 win over Aston Villa. They turned up and they didn't really give a good account of themselves. They proved why they should be in the championship. Now, Ashley Young, former Villa player, got the first goal in the game. You'll see that he hasn't even started in the Premier League this season. Had a couple of games in the under-23, done okay. But I brought him into the EFL Cup. I wanted to rotate down that left side and got a goal. First, first appearance in the first team for United this season. And he bagged himself a goal. And finally, probably our best performance of the time spent off camera for myself. It was a 2-0 home win against Hull. Zlatan Ibrahimovic with two goals. You'll notice that attendance was slightly lower than our last couple of games. Maybe it was our league form, but we certainly bounced back. Look at this. We kept Hull at bay. They didn't even have one shot on target in this game. We absolutely dominated them. 25 shots for United, 8 on target. 58% possession. It does make me wonder how it only finished 2-0 to United. It should have been by a lot more. should have been a lot more comfortable than that. Performance-wise, though, we were brilliant. Can't knock it. And I hope that carries over into our next game in the Europa League, which I'm going to be doing the live come off. So there are our last couple of fixtures then. So two losses in the league... Uh, before that win against Hull. It was so vital that we got that. Otherwise, we would have found ourselves falling further behind. Just quickly, I almost forgot, the FA Cup third round draw has been made. You'll see that we are away to Chelsea. What a tie that's going to be. And the semi-final for the EFL Cup, the first leg, will be away to Brentford and then they will come and visit us at Old Trafford. We should, should be getting to the final there. So here is the league table as it stands then. 14 games gone. Those two losses against Tottenham and Stoke don't help matters. We're a couple of points behind Chelsea. We're six points behind the league leaders, Tottenham. And look at Arsenal. They're up in fourth. They're a point behind us. Man City down in eighth. That's just reminding me there's been a lot of movement as well. When it comes to managers, I'll get to that in just a moment. Slatan has got 12 goals in the Premier League as we head into December. It is the eighth now and uh, he's got the best average rating as well, but he's level with N'Golo Kante. So with the managers, how do I get to transfers? Manager movements. You'll see that Jurgen Klopp has been sacked by Liverpool. And they have been taken over at the moment by caretaker manager Michael Beale. So Liverpool in the market for a new manager. And you'll notice that the Premier League champions are now with that manager as well. Claudio Ranieri has been sacked as well. There's two huge sackings uh, as we're just approaching December really. Not even halfway through the season. Liverpool, Klopp was sacked for poor league uh, position. I mean, they lost to Arsenal 5-1. I think that was the, the final nail in the coffin for Klopp. Or maybe it was the 3-1 loss to Everton, their biggest rivals. The Merseyside derby there at Goodison Park. And then, of course, they did lose to us uh, before the international break. And then there's Leicester. 
Premier League champions last season. They're now in the relegation zone. It's very similar to what's happening in real life at the moment. Absolute turmoil there and to think that they've lost Ranieri as well. Right, moving on to Manchester United. We've already qualified for the knockout stages of the Europa League. We've only got one game to go in the group stages. That is at home to Krasnodar. We've already beaten them on their turf. 4-2 it was over in Russia earlier in the season. Now they come to Old Trafford and I want to win the group. So the plan for this episode is I'll play the game against Krasnodar, then play the West Brom game off camera and then come back for the Europa League first knockout round draw. So the teams are in then. So for Manchester United in goal it is David De Gea. At the back, Luke Shaw, Marcus Rojo, Phil Jones and Damian. In central midfield, Ante Herrera comes in. He's been banned for a couple of games in the Premier League, so got to keep his fitness up by starting him in today's game. He plays alongside Fellaini. And going forwards, we've got Martial, Juan Mata, Mkhitaryan and Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who is in such amazing form at the moment. Fosu Mensa starts on the bench. He's had a couple of minutes on the pitch over the last couple of games. Looking forward to what else he has to offer. To be honest, I'm not worried about Krasnodar at all. Here we go then. Krasnodar get the kickoff. And rainy conditions here. It's to be expected with it being Manchester and all. I was asked about that in the, uh, the pre-match press conference. And four minutes in then. Marcus Rojo intercepts. It's on to Martial down that left side. Brings it back in for Fellaini. Darmian. This is brilliant. Darmian whips it in. And it's just... Over here, Martial having to hunt the ball down. Here is Herrera to Darmian, Darmian to Mkhitaryan. There we go. Fantastic start. A perfect response after our recent dip in form in the league. It's 1-0, just under five minutes gone. And hopefully there is more to come. Darmian finds Mkhitaryan. Perfectly done. That is beautiful. So 1-0 then. Will there be a response from Krasnodar? Is that going to be too much for them? Has that knocked their confidence? Martial's got an injury here. It's a strained calf. Is he going to be okay? Is he going to be able to run that off? I mean, is, we'll keep him on for now. His conditioning's going up, so we'll reassess. Oh, there we go. 2-0. Ibrahimovic with the header. 18 minutes gone. And I think that's pretty much game over for uh, Krasnodar. I don't see them getting back in this now. I think we're just too much for them. What a ball from Darmian. He's been brilliant so far. Yellow card for Phil Jones. As we're pro as the yellow card for Herrera. Oh no. I left Martial on too long. And he's going to have to come off now. So we'll replace him with Jesse Lingard. Hopefully that's not a long term injury. Because we've still got Rashford out for another three months. Again. Nice play here from United. Very positive. As we start the second half, Fellaini unchallenged, finds Darmian again. It's Darmian with another assist for Manchester United. It is Ibra that's on the end of that ball, gets his second goal of the game, and it's 3-0. Game's over. I'm sure with the throw. Very happy. Just feel like sitting back in my chair here. Here is Ibra again. Ibra's going to go it all the way and he has, oh my words, it's 4-0, there's his hat-trick, that's his 18th goal of the season. Ibra, unchallenged. What are the Krasnodar players doing? I mean, they've got one player there, one behind him. This guy can start tucking in, maybe try and go for a challenge. But no, I mean, the keeper could still come out and try and make himself big, but he failed to do it. Woke up this morning, feeling fine. Got Man United. There we go. Full time. 4 0 to United. What a performance. What a result. Gold Glut for Manchester United as we have finished now with all the games in the group stage. Let's go through all the teams then that have qualified. Krasnodar, even though they did lose 4 0 at Old Trafford, advanced through with United. In Group B, then it's West Ham and Fiorentina that advanced through. Let's keep it rolling. Zenit and Genk go through. Then you've got Monaco and Athletic Bilbao. They advance through. Monaco, dominant in their group. Ajax and Vigo are through. Nice and Legia. Let's keep it cruising. Southampton and Shakhtar Donetsk are in the hat for the 
knockout stages, Schalke and Lille and Zoya who united hard in their group in real life, Copenhagen they're through, Rapid Wien and PA are OK, Inter Milan and Standard and finally Porto and Ludogrets all advance through to the next stage of the Europa League. Ibra has got three player of the match awards as well in that competition. Now Martial, ooh, out for three to five weeks. We're in December now as well. He'll be out for three weeks. We'll send him to the physio. That is a bit of a blow that for United. We're uh, going to have to probably rely on someone like Lingard, Mata, who can play out wide. Maybe push Mkhitaryan over to the left. We'll just praise Ibra here. So we've played West Brom and we hammered them 4-1 at the Hawthorns. Very happy with this result. Uh, we didn't really start the game off particularly well, but we finished it up. We got there in the end. Paul Pogba's free kick, though. Take a look at this. I'll just quickly rewind it, and then we'll slow down the footage as well. Now, it did take a deflection from 25 yards out, but he's been praised by Tony Pulis, the West Brom manager, for the free kick. My hill couldn't stop it, as there was so much power behind it. Just look at the arrogance. The confidence of Pogba as he goes off and celebrates. So a great result. Three points in the bag as we continue to put pressure on Spurs. Once we grew into the game, once we got going, there was there was no stopping us. So the weekend's results look like this. After Liverpool are without a manager at the moment, I did expect them to roll over to Chelsea, but it finished 2 all there at Anfield. Arsenal struggled against Stoke. Stoke did us a favour, getting a penalty in the dying embers of that game. They got a point from that game. Tottenham won again, so they stay top. Man City with a convincing 3-0 win there to Bournemouth. So there is the lead table as it stands. We move up to second. We're still six points behind Spurs. Chelsea level on points with us after their 2 all draw at Anfield. Arsenal back in top four. Well, they're in fourth. Yeah, nothing's new there. And Man City is starting to climb the table as well. They're up into sixth level on points with Watford. Ibra on 14 goals then for the league. Here we go. This is what we've all been waiting for. The Europa League first knockout round draw. Bring it on. Let's see who we're going to get. There's some top teams in this draw, to be honest. You know, the likes of Ajax, Inter Milan. Uh, you've got Tottenham also, Premier League uh, leaders. So we're going to click on automatic draw. You've got Monaco, who dominated their group. I still think it's a winnable competition. I think we could probably go all the way. Ludogrets have been drawn then at home to Zoya. Fiorentina and Zenit. Lille will play at home the first leg against Ajax. You expect Ajax to get the win there. There's Krasnodar. He came second. They've got Monaco. Tough game for them. They will be at home for the first leg though. Shakhtar Donetsk and Inter Milan. Genk and Nice. Who are we going to get? Dynamo Kiev have drawn FC Porto, two times Europa League winners. CSK Moscow and Rapid Wien. Oh, that's how you pronounce their name. Is it Wien or Wien? Copenhagen have drawn Southampton. Celta Vigo at home to Schalke. PAOK against West Ham. Legia against Manchester United. Well, there we go. We will be away for the first leg so advantage to us as the draw continues so Tottenham the Premier League lead leaders we've got standard Liège away from home PSV and Leicester Olympiakos and Victoria Pizen so that's not a bad draw I'm really happy with that first leg away from home against a team that we really should be beaten but then again they'll be up for it at least these fixtures won't take place in December. We've already got a packed schedule. So they will take place. The first fixture will be the 16th of Feb next year. And then looks like we've got them the following week. Got no game in between. So that's going to be about it for this episode. I'm thinking for the next episode. Do we come back for that Chelsea game in the FA Cup? Maybe do a double live com for the FA Cup and EFL Cup. But then again, when you look at our league games after that, we've got Arsenal and Chelsea both away from home. I might do a double live con for those two, Arsenal and Chelsea, and go over all those other fixtures before 
and that then will set us up nicely for those two fixtures against Legia in the uh, the Europa League knockout stages. I think that's what we'll do then. So the next episode, what an episode it's going to be. Arsenal and Chelsea, both away from home in the league where we need points. Don't miss it. That's it for this episode then, guys. Thank you all for watching. <laughs>